اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا ما لکم اذا قیل لکم انفروا فی سبیل اللہ ساقلتم من الارض ارضیتم بالحیات الدنیا من الاخرہ فما متاع الحیات الدنیا فی الاخرت اللہ قلیل اللہ تنفرو یعذبکم عذابا علیما و یستبدل قوما غیرکم ولا تضروہ شیعہ واللہ علا کل شیعن قدیر اللہ تنفروہ فقد نصرہ اللہ از اخرجہ الذین کفروا ثانی اسنین از ہما فی الغار از یقول لصاحبہ لا تحزن ان اللہ معنا فانزل اللہ سکینتہ علیہ و ایدہ بجنود لم تروہا وَجَعَلَ كَلِمَةَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا السُّفْلَى وَكَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلْيَا وَاللَّهُ عَزِيدٌ حَكِيمٌ صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل لقبتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی Now from this ayah number 38 till the end of this surah It's a long discourse which revolves around the غزبت التبوك because actual fighting didn't take place, so we can't call it Ghazwa also, but it can be called expedition, the journey of the book. And these are 11 sections of this surah. Some of these ayat were revealed before the commencement of the journey. Some, as I told you before, during the journey, going towards the book, coming back from the book. Then because the Prophet the Muslim stayed there at Tubuk for about two or three weeks, I'm not sure at this time. So some of the ayat were revealed there. And then, you know, some of the ayat were revealed after his coming back and reaching Medina. Now what is most important about this Ghazwa or the journey of the expedition is, as I told you, regarding the philosophy of the deen, this represents the initiation of the process of the Baisatul Amma or you may call it the exportation of the Mohammedan revolution alayhi salatu was salam. It began as I told you in the year 7 of Hijrah when the Prophet wrote letters to Heraclius, to the emperor of Iran, to Maqaqas of Egypt, to Nagus of Abyssinia and to chiefs of Bahrain and so on and so forth. Now one incident occurred. That is, a letter was sent to Shurahbil bin Abr. He was the king of Ghassan under the Roman Empire, a tributary to the Roman Empire, but so to say a, 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 a king in himself the chief of that area of tribe. The Prophet ﷺ sent him a letter also. And Hazrat Haris ibn Umar Azli, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, was the emissary. He took the letter. This fellow, Shurahbil bin Amr, he killed the emissary, the messenger of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, this was an offensive act. It was a challenge to the state of, of Medina, you may call it, of now it was not of Medina only, it was the whole of Arabia now, nearly. So the Prophet sent, sallallahu alayhi wa an army of 3,000 of companions to take the revenge. Now when this army was sent, Heraclius himself, the Roman emperor, was present in Syria. He sent an army of 100,000 people to confront this army of 3,000 only. Another 100,000 were present as a support. So when these people reached, and it was under the command of Hazrat Zaid ibn Harissa radiallahu ta'ala, when they came to know that we have to confront 100,000 people, it's the ratio of 1 to 33 already. And if you know, another 100,000 can be added, it becomes you know, 1 to 66. So should we have a confrontation or we should retreat? So most of the people said, no, we need shahada fi sabirillah. Victory or no victory, we must go and, you know, 
confront them. So this was the battle of Muta, which was fought in the, the month of Jamaat al-Ula, in the eighth year of Hijrah. Now, when the battle started, there was no, you know, comparison. Hazrat Zayd ibn Harisa radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he was martyred. Then the command, the Prophet had already said, Zayd ibn Harisa, he falls. Then Hazrat Jafar ibn Abi Talib, a cousin, cousin the, the elder brother of Hazrat Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Then he had to take the command, he took the command, he also fought and he also was martyred. Then according to the instruction of the Prophet sallallahu Abdullah ibn Rawaha and Ansari from Medina, radiyallahu anhu, he took the command, he was also martyred. Then you know the Muslims themselves, now all the three whom the Prophet had nominated, they had been martyred. So now the Muslims decided themselves over there to make Khalid ibn Walid their chief. And he then somehow, by some maneuvers, he could go, who could take them back, you know, and they reached Medina. So this was, in a way, it was a very big success also, to have come back safe out, you know, after confronting 100,000 people. But in a way, it was a defeat also. Now, because Heraclius now became, you know, conscious of the threat to his empire from the south. So he began amassing more army and preparing because, you know, this, this could be the soft underbelly, as you call it, of the Roman Empire. If there was a thrust from the south, so you, the, the whole empire, you know, that could be affected. This, these news were reaching the Prophet also. So he now prepared an expedition, decided to go himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is now called the expedition or the Ghazwa of Tabuk. Two things are very peculiar. And they were, you know, for the first time, these things were, these steps were taken. Number one, the target was absolutely declared clear. We are going to confront Rome. So that it should be clear to all people where they are going. They should know it beforehand. Number two, that... Every moment has to go. This is the first and the last occasion during the whole lifetime of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That it was made obligatory for every Muslim. Compulsory. You may call it general mobilization in the modern terminology. But every Muslim had to go. So actually this expedition of the book, the Prophet went there with 30,000 of companions. And he stayed there. Heraclius knew that this army has come. But because he had already recognized that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah. And he knew it. I can't confront him. So he held back. He didn't come forward. And the Prophet ﷺ stayed there for about two or three weeks. About 20 days as far as I can recollect. And during this period, you know, he accomplished something which I will give you later on. And then he returned. But you know, what were the, the accomplishments of this journey? Number one, the Prophet ﷺ showed to the Roman Empire that Islam stands undaunted, not to be cowed down, ready to have a confrontation with the Roman Empire. It was the Roman Empire which, you know, receded back. They had didn't come just like Mota. Because in Mota, the Prophet himself was not present. But it was Tabuk now, the Prophet was himself present and he knew, Heraclius, that if I confront him, I'll be defeated. So, number one, you know, this morale of the Muslims and this new state, Islamic state in the Arabian Peninsula, the morale of its citizens and all the Mu'minin, you know, it rose high. Number two, when this Prophet stayed there for about two weeks or three weeks, he made treaties with all the tribes of that area so that the borders of that Islamic state was become secure. So that was the second accomplishment that he got. The third was that through this expedition of Tubuk, the Prophet made the Munafiqeen 
absolutely exposed. And he took a stern action against Munafiqeen after coming back. Liquidation of Munafiqeen, that was the third accomplishment of this. Because when it was made clear that every Mumin has to go, whosoever didn't go, he became apparent. Although there is something which we shall read, inshallah, that they came and they, and they got the leave of the Prophet ﷺ due to some lame excuses. But you know, but it became apparent, who are they? And then you know, their conspiracy that they had built a mosque as a center for their conspiracies. The Prophet, when he came back, the Prophet, he was commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to burn it down and to pull it down. So that was a very big blow. And according to some traditions, the Prophet also identified about 30 of them. And you know, he called by names, such and such, son of such and such, should stop, should, should stand up and leave our place. So this is the only incident in the whole life of the Prophet ﷺ, that he did identify certain munafiqeen, made them apparent and known to the public to the Muslims, to the Mormons, that such and such people are Munafiqeen. Not all of them, but some of them. But you know, this, this season in which this expiration was being undertaken was very unfavorable. Hottest days of the Arabian Peninsula. Then you know, there was dearth of you know, food. And now, the harvest of the date that was ready, and there was danger if it is not harvested at proper time, it will also decay because, you know, harvesting the dates is not an easy job. Women cannot do it. Going up, you know, the, the high stem of the date palm and then taking the dates from there. So if no men were to remain behind to harvest the, this crop, it will also go to waste. So all types of, you know, hard trials and tribulations and tests they were gathered together for the second time during this Madani period. The first time is Ghazwatul Ahzab, hardest test. The moments, the, this, this Hezbollah was put, put to the hardest test during that also and rather more hard now because now people know we are confronting the Roman Empire. Up till now, there was, you know, in sort of infighting between the tribes, between the, between the people of Arabia only. But now an established superpower of the time. Because at that time also incidentally there were two superpowers. The empire of Iran and the empire of Rome. And you know sometimes the Romans advanced and they captured some area from the Iranians. And on other occasions the Iranians advanced and captured some, some area, the Syria and some part of Turkey from Romans. This was happening for the last 600 years or so. The, the history was, you know, hanging. A seesaw, you know, play was going on between these two empires. The Roman Empire on the one hand and the Iranian Empire on the other hand. That is why we find, you know, in Surah to Rome in Quran, Alif Lam mean, Wolebati Rum of Yadna Lard, Bahum in Bad, Wolebahim Sayyabul. So that is an incident which has been referred to in Quran also. So actually, these were the conditions in which Nifaq came out, it became apparent. Munafiqeen could be identified plainly. So this was the third accomplishment of this expedition of Tabuk. Now let us start. Ya amanu ma'alakum iza qila lakum unfiru fi sabilillah saqaltum in Oh you who believe, now note here, who are being addressed really are not the true Mormons. These are the Munafiqs. But as I told you, nowhere in Quran they have been addressed as Ya Yuhal Ladina Nafaku or Ya Yuhal Munafiku. Because legally they were also Muslims. Oh, you who profess to believe, let us translate it that way. Malakum, what has happened to you? Is Aqil Alakum Surufi Sabirillah? When it is said to you, go out in the way of Allah, is Saqal to Milalard. You cling heavily to the earth. A Razitum fil bil hayati dunya. Have you now preferred life of this world? You are pleased with this life of this world over the Akhira? You are bartering Akhira off in exchange for this worldly life? 
فل آخرت اللہ قدیر سو آل دیز دی کمفرٹس اینڈ دی مٹیریل آف دس ورلڈ لائف ایز کمپیئر ٹو آخرا از ایکول ٹو زیرو قلیل مینس دی لٹل اے لٹل ایز ایف اٹس نتھنگ ایز آئی ٹول یو دی فائنائٹ کمپیئر ٹو ان فائنائٹ کمس ٹو زیرو وٹ از اٹ نتھنگ اللہ تن ضرور یو عزب کم عذاب علیم ایف یو ڈونٹ گو آؤٹ ٹو فائٹ فار دی کاز آف اللہ دس از دی کریٹیکل ٹائم فار دس نیولی بورن اسلامک اسٹیٹ This system of Khilafah is threatened from the north. And now everyone has to come forward to defend it. Allah will give you a very painful torment and punishment. And he will remove you and bring another nation in your place. You will not be able to do any harm to him. Wallahu ala kulli shayil qadeer. The law has power of ev- on everything. If you don't help him, whom? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know the mission was assigned to Muhammad. It was his duty basically as the messenger of Allah to make the deen of Allah supreme. So whoever was helping him actually, whoever was participating in this jihad, He was helping him. The mission was his. Illa tansuruhu. If you don't help him, faqad nasarahu Allah. Allah has been helping him. He doesn't care about you. Is akhrajahu al-lazina kafaru. When those who disbelieved, they expelled him from Makkah. Saan yasnayn edhuma fil ghar. He was the second of the two, where both of them were in a cave. The cave of Saur. Where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم After coming out from his home, he stayed for three days and three nights. They, he, both of them, Hazrat Abu Bakr and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were, you know, they kept hiding there. Is yaqulu li sahibihi, when he said, he was saying to his companion, that is Abu Bakr radhi Allah ta'ala, la ta'hzan, don't be grieved. Inna Allah ma'ana, verily Allah is with us. You know, you know the details of this incident. Every Muslim knows. فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ So Allah sent down His calm and tranquility over him. وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا And He helped him with the army's horse which you could not see of the angels. وَجَعَلَ كَلِمَةً لَذِينَ كَفَرُوا سُفْلَا And He made He made the word of those who disbelieved lowest. And the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the supreme, is the uppermost. Wallahu azizul hakeem and Allah is all powerful, all authority and all wise. In firu khifafum wa siqala. You have to go out whether you are khifaf or you are siqal. Now there are two meanings of these words. Khifaf Having less arms and rations. You don't have sufficient arms and rations. Even then you have to go out. Number two. If the inclination of the heart, inclination is present. Then if man feels light. I am going lightly. And siqal. When you are fully loaded with your arms and provisions. Or when you, are, you have to go, you know, heavy hearted. You don't want to do. You want to go. You have to go. That is, you know, the words in the bayah. Bayana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala sabi wa ta'ati fil usri wal yusri wal manshati wal bakrati. Fil usri wal yusri. Whether the conditions are easy, favorable, or they are difficult. Wal manshati wal bakrati. Whether we feel inclined to do it, or we have to force ourselves to do it. But we shall obey whatever command comes from you. So now these are the two meanings. You have to go out whether you have more arms and provisions or you have less arms or provisions. In the same way, you have to go out whether you feel inclined or you have to force yourselves to do it. Infiru khifafum wa siqalum wa jahidu bi awalikum wa anfusikum fi sabilillah and make jihad in the way of Allah with your belongings, your riches and your lives. 
ذالکم خیر لکم ان کنتم تعلمون دس از بیٹر فار یو اف یو نو اف یو ہیو دی ریئل نالج لو کان عرضا قریبا و سفرا قاصدا لتبعوک اف دی گین واز نیئر ایٹ ہینڈ اینڈ دی جرنی واز شارٹ دے وڈ ہیو فالوڈ یو او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بٹ ناؤ بیکاز اٹس اے ویری لانگ جرنی گوئنگ آل دی وے ٹو سیریا ان سچ اے ہاٹ سیزن ہاٹ ویدر ولاکن باودت علیہم الشقہ دی ڈسٹنس واز ٹو فار فرام فار دیم و سیحلفون باللہ لو استطعنا لخرجنا معاکم اینڈ دے ویل سویر بائی اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی that had it been possible for us we would have gone with you oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you lekun anfusahum they are destroying their own selves by telling this lie wallahu ya'lamu bi annahum lakafimun allah very well knows that they are telling a lie they are liars afallahu anka now this afallahu anka has two means may allah forgive you اور اللہ ہیز فار گیون یو دیز ٹو بوتھ یونیورس رضی اللہ عنہ اللہ ہیز بین پلیز ود دیم اینڈ مے اللہ بی پلیز ود ہم سو ایکچولی دوز بوتھ ٹرانسلیشن وڈ بی کریکٹ اللہ ہیز فار گیون یو اور مے اللہ فار گیو یو لما زنتا لہو وائی ڈڈ یو گرانٹ دیم دی لیو وین اے منافق کیم او یا رسول اللہ اٹس ویری ڈیفیکلٹ فار می These are the conditions. My wife is sick. Nobody is there to look after her. Or my parents, nobody, nobody is there to look after them. And this is such and this is that. And the Prophet said, okay, you are granted leave. Afallahu. May Allah pardon you. Or Allah has pardoned you. Why did you grant them leave? Hatta yatabayyana lakal ladhina sadaqu wa ta'ala mal kazimeen. Until it became clear for you, it would have become clear for you who are the true in their statements and who are only telling a lie. If you didn't grant the, them the permission, they would not have gone with you. But you know, their nifaq would have come to the surface that they are disobeying without, you know, the permission, the explicit permission of the Prophet ﷺ. If they hold back, their nifaq will become apparent, would have become apparent. But now when you have given them the leave, the cover remains over their nifaq. لَا يَسْتَعْزِنُكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Those who really believe in Allah and the last day, they never ask for any leave. اَنْ يُجَاهِدُوا بِأَمْوَالِ وَأَنْفُسِمْ Leave from this, that they should make jihad for the cause of Allah. Who Mu'min will turn his face away from it? No truly believing Mu'min can ask for permission for, for, or leave. اللہ علیم بن متقی اللہ بری ون نوز دی پیپل ہو آر ریئلی گاڈ فیئرنگ ہو آر ریئلی کانشیس آف اللہ ان نما یستاد نک الذین لا یؤمنون بالله واليوم الاخر ایکچولی اونلی دوز پیپل کم ٹو ٹیک ٹو بیگ فار لیو یو نو اینڈ پرمیشن ناٹ ٹو گو ود یو ہو ڈونٹ بلیو ریئلی ان اللہ اینڈ دی لاسٹ ڈے ورتابت قلوبہم اینڈ یو نو देयर ہارٹس آر ان ڈاؤٹس فہم فی ریبہم یترددون And they are wavering in their doubts. The same word, you know, which we read in Surah An-Nisa, Muzab Zabina Bayna Zalik. The same is Yataraddadun, Mutaraddid. Whether I should go, I should not go. Well, if I don't go, my nifaq will become apparent. People will know it. They know it. My neighbors know that all this, these lame excuses that I presented, they are false. But I should go. But again, the fear of death and all the hardships that were to be born, that kept him back. So this is taraddud. Muzabzabina bayna zalik, mutaraddadina bayna zalik. Fahum fi rebihim ya taraddadun. Wala waradul khuruja laadu lahu uddatan. Had they really intended to go out for war and fighting, they would have made the preparations. Walakin kareh Allahu imbi'asam. Now this is very important. Allah himself didn't like that they should go out. And the The reader would come later on. فَسَبَّتَهُمْ So Allah made them make a pause. The Allah made them lagging behind. فَسَبَّتَهُمْ وَقِيلَ قُلُوا مَعَ الْقَائِدِينَ And it was said to them that, okay, you sit, sit back with those who are sitting back, who are not going out. 
ناؤ کمس دی 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 وزڈم آف دس ڈسیجن آف اللہ لو خرجو فی کم آزادو کم اللہ خبالا ہیڈ دے کم آؤٹ ود یو اینڈ اکمپلیٹ یو دے وڈ ناٹ ہیو انکریز اینی تھنگ فار یو بٹ ٹربل میکنگ کانسپریسیز سینگ سم تھنگ ہیئر وسپرنگ ہیئر اگینسٹ دی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم گوئنگ دیئر سینگ سم تھنگ ایلس اوور دیئر ما زادوکم اللہ خبالا ولا اوبرو خلالکم یبغونکم الفتنہ and they would have gone hurried to and fro to bring some sedition or prone to be incited yabhunakum al fitna wa fikum sabaun lahum and there are people you know who listen to them among you because these munafiqs you know they were rich people influential people so now those some of the people from us and khadijah they used to listen to them they are they are our chieftains For example, Abdullah ibn Ubayy was the chief and you know it had been decided that he will be declared the king of, of Yasrib. But when the Prophet came, all his dreams, you know, they were shattered. So actually these were, you know, people who had resources. So there were people who would have listened to them when they, if they were with you in this journey, they would have created trouble. وَفِيكُمْ سَبْمَعُونَ لَهُمْ لَهُمْ واللہ علیم الظالمین اللہ ویری ویل نوز دس ظالمین ناؤ دس از ویری امپارٹنٹ دے ڈیڈنٹ گو اللہ آلسو سیٹ ڈونٹ گو سو اللہ از ایٹریبیوٹ ان ڈیڈ ٹو ہم سیلف وی میڈ دیم سیٹ بیک اینڈ دوز ہو ڈسائڈیڈ ٹو گو اللہ میڈ اٹ ایزی فار دیم ٹو گو سو اٹ دے ول سے اللہ میڈ دی کنڈیشن فیوریبل فار اس دیٹ وی کوڈ کم کم آؤٹ سو ایٹریبیوٹنگ ٹو اللہ and attributing to yourself both things are absolutely correct i want to lift this i cannot lift it without the permission of allah so i can say i have lifted it i can say allah has make me lift it both things are absolutely correct every action every movement necessarily has two elements an intention from a person and the permission from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So you can attribute it to the person or to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَاكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ إِمْ بَعَسَاؤُمْ فَسَبَّتَهُ وَقِيلَ قُعْدُوا مَا الْمُقَائِدِينَ لَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ مَا زَادُوكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالَ وَلَعَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ يَبْغُونَكُمْ الْفِتْنَةِ وَفِيكُمْ سَمَّعُونَ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ لَقَدْ upsetting the matters for you O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for all these long years at Medina what they had been doing 300 of them came back from Uhud that was the only the third year after the Hijra and such a big you know incident out of an army of 1000 300 deserters and, also, and they deserted and they came back when you know both the armies were eye to eye with each other They were within the sight of each of the armies. The morale of the people who remained must also have suffered a shock. We were 1,000. Already we were one-third of the enemy. They are 3,000. We were 1,000. Now from 1,300 and gone, what would be the effect? Natural effect. This natural effect definitely was there. So they have been doing it all along. لَقَدْ اِبْتَغَبُوا الْفِتْنَةَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَقَلَّبُوا لَكَ الْمُورِ حَتَّى جَعَلْ حَقُّ وَزَهَرَ عَبْرُ اللَّهِ Until Haq, the truth, came and the decision and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appeared. This refers to the victory of Bakka. Because this is the ninth year of Hijrah in which these ayat are being revealed. And a year before, rather more than a year before, the Prophet had the victory of Bakka. So that was the final, you know. Symbol of final victory of triumph, final triumph over the Arabian Peninsula. Hatta jaal haqq wa zahar abrullah wa hum karehun. They didn't like it. The hypocrites, they didn't like it. Wa min hum man yaqulu zhalli wa la kaftinni. And among them are people who say, O Prophet, just give me leave. Permit me to hold back and not go. And don't put me to a test. You know, I beg that you don't put me to a test. 
الافل فتنت سقطوا دي هاف فالن ان دي تيست دي هاف اولريدي فيلد ان دي تيست ذس اي ريفرز تو ان انسيدنت دير واز ا منافق جد ابن قيس اند يو نو هي واز سچ ا وات تو سي يو نو سچ ا نوتي تايپ اوف مان هي كيم تو دي بروفيت يا رسول الله I am a very weak person, and you know women are my weakness. And these Roman and Syrian women, they are very beautiful. So if I go there, I won't be able to hold myself. So this will be a very big test for me. So it's better, please, you don't put me to that test. But in whom I have called the Lord, La Taftini, don't put me to the test. Allah will fit me to suffer too. They have already failed the test. When they said, "I don't want to go to fight for the cause of Allah," they have failed the test. By na jahan na mala mohita to mil kafirin, and definitely, hell has already encircled all these kuffar. In to sib ka hasana tun tasuhum. If some good fortune comes to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to the Muslims, tasuhum. They feel sorry for it. They are offended. Why in tosib ka musibatu? And if some calamity befalls, some misfortune, some unpleasant thing comes to you, yakulu kada khazna amrana min qabl. They say, oh, we had taken care of our, our affairs already. We were not fools like them to put ourselves into such dangers and risks and risk our lives and property. So we we have taken care of everything. By Allah, we have been forgiven, and then they go back and they rejoice that this calamity has befallen the Muslims and this loss has come to them. They rejoice. All line you see, Bana. Now this ayat is very important. Every one of us should remember this ayat by heart. All line you see, Bana. Illa ma katab Allahu lana, huwa maulana. Tell them nothing can befall us. Except that which our Lord, our Rab, Ma Katab Allahu Lana, Allah has written for us. He has decreed. He has decided for us. Who am I, Lana? And He is our Lord. He is our protector. He is our friend. Ke har te saaki mar ek ali al taafast. Whatever my friend, you know, puts down in my glass, it's all his bounty. He knows better what is good for me, whether victory is good for me or being killed in the in the way of Allah is better for me. So we just give ourselves to the will of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. This is called Tafwizul Amri Ila Allah. We give our affairs in the hands of Allah. Ba fufu do Amri Ila Allah. Inna Allah Basirun Bil Ibad. He very well knows. He is seeing what are my conditions. Whatever he decides is good for me. قل لن يصيبنا الا ما كتب الله لنا هو مولانا وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون and the believers must put their whole faith and trust in Allah قل هل تربصون بنا الا هذا الاستيان هذا الايا these two ayat is very important for every muslim especially a person who has this dynamic concept of deen and who has decided to devote his life for this jihad and for the struggle to establish the deen of Allah because examinations after examinations tests and tribulations and trials after trials will be coming so these two ayat qul lan yusibana illa ma katab Allah lana huwa maulana wa ala Allah falyatawakkal al mu'minun qul hal tarabbusuna bina illa bina illa ihdal husnayn say do you wait for us what can you wait for us except two very good results Ehdan husna yen. Husna is feminine of ahsan. From akbar kubra. From azam uzma. Ahsan husna. Ehdan husna yen. Two most beautiful, you know, results can come to us. Even if we are more tired, it's the best that we can get. Even if we and if we turn victorious, then you will also say that it is good for us. So there's no fear of anything bad for us. For a real moment, nothing bad can come to him. The worst is that he loses his life, and he thinks it is the best. 
لہذا یو نو آئی گیو یو دی کپلیٹ گل حسر مرنے پہ ہو جس کی امید نا امیدی اس کی دیکھا چاہیے ہو ایز پٹ آل از ہوپ ان ڈائنگ فار دی کاز آف فار سم کاز ہی ول ناٹ ہیو ٹو ڈسپیئر ایٹ اینی اسٹیج ہی از ریڈی ٹو گیو ایوری تھنگ کل ہل طرف بتونا بنا اللہ احد الحسن ٹو آف دی بیسٹ ریوارڈس مسلم You, you, you are testifying that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. We have accepted you as Muslims. But maybe a time comes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this cover off from you and he allows us to punish you. وَنَحْنُ نَتَرَبَّسُوا بِكُمْ أَنْ يُسِيبَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِ مِنْ إِنْدِهِ أَوْ بِعَدِينَا فَتَرَبَّسُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ مُتَرَبِّسُونَ So now wait, you also and we are also waiting. قُلَنْ فِقُوتَعُنْ اَوْ كَرْحَا Tell them, say to them, whether you spend for the cause of Allah willingly or forcibly, forcing yourself, not liking it, لَنْ يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْكُمْ It will not be accepted from you now. Now this was their, you know, their habit. Whenever, you know, such a time came, now go, انشروا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Go to fight for the cause of Allah. Oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, grant me permission not to go, but I am ready to donate this much. So that, you know, this becomes a compensation for not going. And that was only to cover up their cowardice. Now here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared, now their donations will not be accepted. قُلْ أَنْفِقُوا تَعْوَانْ اور كَرْحَرْ لَا يُتَقَبَّلَ مِنْكُمْ اِنْدَكُمْ كُنْتُمْ قَوْمًا فَاسِقِينَ Now you have... really transgressed and you have just joined really and actually joined the transgressors and there is nothing that prevents that the their their donations may, may be expect, accepted illa annahum kafaru billah but the reason is that they have done kufr with allah although they claim to be muslims but now their nifaq has reached that level That actually all Iman has gone from them. It's only a veneer. You know the termite when it eats the wood. It leaves, leaves a, a veneer intact. So that people who own the house. They don't know that, that this, this, the whole wood has been eaten away. They leave that, that veneer intact. So wise are they. In the same way this veneer of, of legal Islam was intact. But from within the whole of Iman had gone. So really they were now kafirs. Although legally they had the cover of Islam. وَمَا مَنَاهُمْ أَن تُقْبَلَ مِنْهُمْ نَفَقَاتُهُمْ إِلَّا أَنَّهُمْ كَفَرُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ They have already committed kufr and rejected Allah as well as His Messenger. وَلَا يَعْتُونَ السَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالَةَ And they don't approach prayer, salah, but only lazily. Because they have to You know, keep themselves counted as Muslims. And they don't spend anything, they don't donate anything, except unwillingly, not from their own hearts, not willingly. So, O oh Prophet ﷺ, don't be amazed at their riches as well as their children. انما يريد الله ان يعذبهم بها في الحياه الدنيا what allah intends is to punish them to chastise them on account of these very two things in this life of this world their children will be rebelling against them they will become a source of chastisement and azab in this world this mal This belonging, this property, this riches, always fearing lest they, they, it, it is lost, lest it is gone. So actually, they are being punished in this life also. So actually, these two things, you know, 
they would become the basis and vehicle of punishment for them in this worldly life watas ha kanfuzu wa hum kafirun and their souls will go out of their bodies in this state of kufr wa yahlifuna billah innahum la minkum and they swear by allah subhanahu wa taala that they are from amongst you we are with you we are also mu'mins just trust us it was actually you know for me for me it became impossible i wanted from the very depths of my heart to go with you but i swear by allah subhanahu wa taala don't suspect don't have any suspicions about my iman wa yahlifuna billah innahum la minkum wa ma hum minkum actually they are not from amongst you lakinahum qaumun yafraqun they are afraid of you they can't declare their kufr they know now muhammad is the authority in the whole of arabia they know the muslim you know the tables have already been turned after the victory of makka who can challenge them now so because they are afraid they don't say openly that we don't believe in what you believe and they have to say that we are also mu'mins but it's only out of fear walakinnahum qaumi yafraqun they are afraid of you la yajiduna maljan aw magharatin aw muddakhalan la wallahu ilayhi wa hum yajmahun had they could they find any refuge or some caves or some or other place to enter there and hide they would have gone and run towards them la khal la wallahu ilayhi they would have gone towards them wa hum yajmahun very rushingly they don't find any refuge now where to go the whole of arabian peninsula is under muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now we can we have no place to run no place to go law yajiduna maljan aw magharatin aw muddakhalan had they found any any place of refuge or any caves or any other place where could they 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 could they could hide themselves they would have gone to them basically wa minhum man yalmizu ka fi sadaqat and there are some who blame you O oh, Prophet, in the distribution of charity and alms, when you know sadaqat came and zakah came, and that was to be distributed among the Muslims, then you know these people said, "Oh, you are doing, you are not doing justice. You have given given more to this person. You are giving less to me." There was an incident. A munafik said, "Hey, dear ya Muhammad, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you must do justice." and you know the prophet was angered and he said illa ma adil fa man yadil if i don't do justice who will do justice so actually he was so much offended on this comment ey dil ya muhammad wa minhum man yalmizu ka fi sadaqat they blame you fain aw tu minha radu if they are given from that they are pleased wa illam yu'ta minha idha hum yasqatun and if they are not given then they are enraged they are angry walaw annahum radu ma ataahum allah wa rasuluhu now this surah you know just like surah an nisa this surah is also many of its you know ayat they are devoted to this the discussion of these munafiqeen and their symptoms and signs and their diseases all these things you know surah an nisa as we read and this surah an tauba ولو انهم رضوا ما اعطاهم الله ورسوله and had they been pleased and contented with what Allah and his messenger had given them وقالوا حسبنا الله and if they had said that Allah is sufficient for us سيؤتينا الله من فضله ورسوله if not this time inshallah Allah and his messenger will give us from their bounty انا الى الله راغبون we are we turn humbly towards allah subhanahu wa taala had this been their condition it was it would have been better for them so the words lakana khairan lahum they are not here mentioned but implied wala wanhum radu ma ataahum allah wa rasuluhu wa qalu hasbunallah sayutina allah bil fadli wa rasuluhu inna ila inallah raghibun lakana khairan lahum had they said these words it would have been much better for them انما الصدقات للفقراء now the sadaqat the obligatory sadaqa sadaqat are obligatory that is zakah 
and voluntary that is sadaqah in our general terminology but quran has used for zakah also this this word sadaqah this is obligatory arms and charity and this is the ayah which gives you know the rules regarding whom this zakat can be given in nama sadaqatul alfuqara the arms the obligatory arms zakah are only for the poor wal masakin and the needy wal amilina alaiha those employed to administer them to collect the zakat and to distribute there may be a department the salaries of those people will also be can be given from this same zakah wal muallafat qulubihim and those whose hearts are to be softened if there are some enemies of allah but you think that if you can give something to them you know their harm will decrease so even to non muslims that zakah could be given but you know hazrat umar said that now that islam is now dominating now this item of giving zakah to such people to just soften their hearts it it has gone after islam has become dominant wa fir riqab and to free the slaves wal gharimin and to help those who are in debts wa fi sabilillah and in the way of allah for jihad for propagation of the word of allah and for the struggle of establishing the deen of allah you can spend inna ma sadaqatu lil fuqara wal masakin wal amilin alaiha wal muallafat qulubuhum wa fi riqab wal gharimin wa fi sabilillah wa bin sabil and for the wayfarers the travelers farizatam min allah this is an ordinance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixed wallahu alimul hakim and allah is all knowing all wise wa minhum alladhina yuzuna an-nabi and from among these munafiqin there are people who hurt the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for example one example is wa yaquluna huwa uzun and they say oh he is merely ears nothing else he listens to everything believes everything you know his upper story is vacant he doesn't know that i am telling a lie he doesn't know he can't discriminate between true and 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 false he just believes in everybody he is uzun yaquluna huwa uzun qul uzun khairul lakum tell them these ears are better for you Had he not believed, taken you to the task, you would have been in trouble. You mino billah hai, but you mino lil mo mini. You mino billah hai, but you mino lil mo mini. Note this: iman with ba. It is faith, conviction. Iman with lam. These two propositions are different. When you know that iman in true faith, it is with ba. Preposition is ba. آمن تو بالله و ملائکته یومنون بالغیب آمنو بالله و رسوله but ایمان with لام is just to accept what you are saying not contradicting so he has full faith یومنو بالله و یومنو للمومنی but he accept the statements of the Muslims okay he doesn't say you are telling a lie only you know out of his gentle gentleness of nature he doesn't like to say you are a liar qul huwa udun khairul lakum yu'minu billahi wa yu'minu lil mu'minin wa rahmatul lil ladina amanu and he is the mercy for the true believers minkum who are the true believers from amongst you wal ladina yuzuna rasulullah lahum azabun alim and as for those who hurt the messenger of allah for them is a painful torment يعلفون بالله لكم ليرضوكم this fear by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh muslims to please you somehow oh wallah billah is fear by allah this was the cause this is the reason only to keep you pleased wallah wa rasuluhu haqq wa yudu and actually allah and his messenger have more right that they should try to please them not to muslims they but they should try to please the be please allah and his messenger in kanu mu'minin if they are real mu'mins 
الم یعلم انه من يحاد لله ورسوله فن له نار جهنم خالدا فيها ذلك الخزي العظيم dont they know that whosoever is hostile towards allah and his messenger for him is the fire of hell wherein he will abide forever ذلك الخزي العظيم and this is the worst humiliation يحذر المنافقون ان تنزل عليهم سوره These munafiq, these hypocrites, keep fearing lest some surah is revealed on them, and I will tell you what it means. Do not be whom the mafi kulu behim, which will tell them, disclose to them what is in their hearts. It can be interpreted in translated in two ways. They are fearful lest some surah is revealed to the Muslims, which tells them. of whatever is hidden in the hearts of the munafiqeen this is one way and you know they are fearing lest some surah is, is sent down on the muslims which you know tells them what is in their hearts shows the mirror to them whatever is hidden in their hearts becomes apparent before them qul istahzu inna allah bukhrijo ma tahzarun and this uh, tell to them say to them well you keep on walking allah subhanahu wa taala will bring out what you are fearing wala in saltahum la yaqulunna inna kunna nakhudu wa nalab when such things reached the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to call explanation did you say these things now they, their plea was wa in saltahum and if you ask their explanations if you ask them la yaqulunna they will surely say inna kunna nakhuzu oh prophet of allah it was just a light talk it was nothing serious when alab we were just, we were just playing and joking look to this person he has reported it matter to you he is a fool he is a mischief monger he has reported it we were not serious we were just joking we were talking you know it was just a light gossip nothing more qul abillahi wa ayatihi wa rasulihi kuntum tasatiru say you were mocking at and jokingly mentioning the ayat of allah abillah wa ayatihi mocking at allah and his revelations and mocking at, at his as in the center kuntum tastahtu they were mocking about them la ta'tadiru qad kafartum ba'da imanikum now don't present before us lame excuses you have committed kufr after your iman You have lost all iman. You have gone back. In nafu and taifatim minkum, if we ignore and turn our eyes from some of you, no azib taifatan. Some of you we shall punish. And as I told you, some of the people were made absolutely clear and declared that they are bulafiki, and they were cast out from the society of the Muslims. In nafu. in nafu an taifatin minkum from some of you we might turn our eyes away ignore them leave them no azib taifatan now the time has come that to some we shall punish bi annahum qanu mujrimin because they are the guilty people sinners al munafiquna wal munafiqatu ba'dhum min ba'dh the munafiq men and the munafiq women they are from one another which we say in urdu ek hi thali ke chatte batte hain they are all related to each other although they might not be related might not be having any blood relations baad hum mim baad and what are they doing ya muruna bil munkar they are enjoying what is wrong what is unjust what is a sin by an hon anil maruf and forbidding from what is good what is maruf the contrary that they should have done if they were true mu'mins ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar bal takum minkum ummatun yaduna ila al-khair wa ya'muruna bil ma'ruf wa yanhawna 'anil munkar but they are the reverse in the reverse direction ya'muruna bil munkar wa yanhawna 'anil ma'ruf wa yaqbizuna aydiyahum they are withholding their hands not spending in the way of allah nasullaha fa nasiyahum 
they have ignored Allah, they have forgotten Allah, and Allah has also forgotten them. In al munafiqeen ahum al fasiqoon Verily, these, these hypocrites, they are the transgressors. Wa'ad Allah al munafiqeen wal munafiqat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised these hypocrite men and women. Wal kuffara and the unbelievers. Now they will be bracketed in the hereafter. In this world, they have been bracketed with the Mormons, legally Muslims. But in the Akhirah, Wa'ad Allah al munafiqeen wal munafiqat wal kuffara nara jahannama khalidina fiha. Fire of hell in which they will remain forever. Hiya hasbuhum, it will suffice them. Wa la'anahum Allah, Allah will curse them. Wa lahum azab al muqeem. And for them there will be a lasting punishment. Kalladzina min qablikum. Like those who were before you. Kanu ashadda minkum quwwatan. They were much more in power and strength than you. Now this refers to the older people, you know. The people of Nu and people of Hud and so on. Wa aksara amwalam wa aulada. They were much more in wealth also. And in children also. Fastam ta'u bi khalaqihim. They had enjoyed their lot. Fastam ta'atum bi khalaqikum. You have also enjoyed your lot in this world. Kama stam ta'al lazina min qablikum bi khalaqihim. Just as those who were before you, they enjoyed their lot. Wa khustum ka lazhi khadu. And they, you also indulged in meaningless talks just as they indulged. Ulai ka habitat abaluhum fi dunya wal akhirah. They are the people whose all good deeds have gone in vain in this world as well as in the hereafter. And definitely they are the people who are the losers. This is now the clarification of that point. Who people are mentioned here? Have not the news come to them already? Because you know these things have been discussed in the Makki surahs. We have recently read you know in Surah Al-Araf all these stories. But here in one ayah all these things are referred. Alam yatihim nabaw lazina min qablihim qawm nuhin wa adin wa samuda wa qawm ibrahim wa ashab madiyana wal mutafikat. The people of Nuh and the Aad and the Samud and the people of Ibrahim and ashab madiyan. People who dwelt you know there in madiyan. Wal mutafikat and people of those two cities who were overturned. Sodom and Gomorrah to which Hazrat Lut alayhi salam was sent. Atathum rusulhum bil bayyina. To them came their messengers with clear teachings, clear signs, clear proofs, clear miracles. Fama kaan Allahu li yaslimahu wa lakin kaanu anfusam yaslimun. So it was not Allah who wronged to them. Actually they wronged to their own, their own selves. Now as a contrast, wal mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'zuhum awliyahu ba'z. Now just see to the contrast. Al mu'minuna wal mu'minatu ba'zuhum awliyahu ba'z. The Mumin men and women, they are friends to each other. This word wali was not used for munafiqeen. Al munafiq wa al munafiqeena. Al munafiquna Because munafiq is not sincere to anybody. They were not sincere to each other even. Had they could, could they be sincere, they would have been sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If they could have any sincerity, their sincerity would have been for for the messenger of Allah, for the Mu'mineen, they were not sincere. Therefore, al-munafiquna wal-munafiqatu ba'zuhum min ba's. And compared it with wal-mu'minuna wal-mu'minatu ba'zuhum awliyahu ba's. They are sincerely with each other. They are friends, they are protectors. And what is their? Ya muruna bil ma'roofe wa yalhona anil munkar. They ordain and enjoy whatever is ma'roof, whatever is good. Wa yalhona anil munkar. And they forbid from whatever is wrong and unjust. Yuqibuna salata. They establish the prayer. Wayutuna zakata. And they pay the zakah. Wayutiruna Allah wa rasulahu. And they keep on obeying Allah and his messenger. Ulaika sayarhabuhum Allah. They are the people whom the mercy of Allah will come. Inna Allah azizul hakim. Verily Allah is aziz, all powerful, and he is hakim, all wise. Ba'ad Allahul mu'minin rabal mu'minati jannatin tadri min ta'atil anhaar. Allah has promised to these mu'min. Men and women, the gardens underneath, underneath which rivers will be flowing. And very pleasant dwellings, very good, lovely dwellings. In the Garden of Eden and Garden of you know, Residential Gardens. And 
and the pleasure from Allah, which is the greatest and the highest, which is most important. La alaikahu al fadul azim, and this is actually the greatest triumph and success. Here comes to an end the discourse which was revealed before the commencement of the journey to Tabuk. And now from 73 till the end of this surah, these are the different ayat which were revealed during this journey or when the Prophet and the Muslims had come back from Tabuk to Medina. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikil hakim.